Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, distant learning on interventional cardiology. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the Indonesia uh, Society of Interventional Cardiology, I would like to thank you, uh, PT Weco Indonesia, for supporting this webinar uh, that will be discussing about uh, BVS. As, uh, can you show my slide, please? Okay, so I, I would like to give uh, just a short, uh, brief introduction. All right, so um, as we all concerned that uh, BVS is one of the uh, milestones in interventional cardiology field history, which uh, offer some advantages that cannot be occurred by uh, putting stands. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so if we implant stents, the more stents we implant, the vessel will lose the uh, vasomotor function, uh, positive vessel remodeling, pulsatile flow, and of course, uh, future surgical intervention if necessary. Next. So the concept of BVS is uh, to provide the benefit of uh, stenting without leaving a permanent implant. Therefore, it may offer a positive impact in terms of uh, restore vessel function. Slide. However, the upsop BVS, as we all know, was uh, withdrawn due to the excess of uh, ISR. Uh, let, let's stand. Uh, thrombosis and or scalp thrombosis, and then uh, recalled and terminated in 2017. Slide, please. So actually, if we take a look, the absorb BVS and synthrop, that the tick of the uh, strut actually is pretty similar. It's about 160 uh, versus 160 micrometer. So as we all know that thinner struts are actually associated with uh, more rapid healing. Next slide. So after the clinical failure of the apps of BVS, the question is, uh, could SINSOP over better clinical outcomes? That uh, we all uh, want uh, to hear to learn from the uh, professor Yu Xiang, okay? So the learning objectives are to understand the appropriate lesion selection and recognize limitations for PVS implantation. And secondly, to demonstrate the important roles of intracoronary imaging and lesion preparation to optimize PVS implantation. Next. So today we will have uh, two speakers. Firstly, Professor Yu Xiang. He is the Deputy Director of the Department of Cardiology, Songshan Hospital, affiliated to Fudan University. And he is outstanding academic leader of Shanghai and as, as well, a secretary and member of the Youth Academic Group of uh, the Cardiovascular Medicine Branch of China's Medical Doctor Association. Slide. And the second speaker is Professor Januar Wipawa Marta. He is interventional cardiologist at Dr. Hassan Sadigin General Hospital, Bandung, and the head of the Cardiology of Vascular Medicine Residency Program, Faculty of Medicine, uh, Pajajaran University. Slide. We will have uh, three uh, distinguished panelists Professor Saifur Rahman uh, from uh, Dr. Saibul Anwar General Hospital Malang, Dr. Ika Komar, and Dr. Dendi Puji Wahyuhadi. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, okay. Prof. Yanwar. Okay. Um, can you hear my voice? Yes, very clearly. Okay. So uh, my talk is about uh, 
bioresorbable uh, scaffold, clinical application, and case sharing. Okay. So, uh, I would like to first uh, thank uh, the Indonesian Society of Internal Cardiology for allowing me to uh, present uh, in this uh, prestigious session. Um, today, I would like to talk about some uh, uh, advantage and some limitation of uh, bio bioresourceable scaffold. And then I would like to share a case with you. So our my objective is to understand advantages of uh, bioresourceable uh, scaffold and then uh, to reflect on technical issues of bioresourceable scaffold and learn clinical usage of bioresourceable scaffold and then uh, last uh, thing is the to case uh, to share a case so as uh, dr bambang uh, said before that uh, history of bio actually uh, begin with absorb i remember i also put some of the stent about uh, the absorb stent to some patient and then there is a there was a interventionist euphoria there a lot of people uh, excited that uh, uh, finally we have stand that could disappear uh, in time. But after some times, the result of trials come up, uh, which is uh, absorbed one, two, three, absorbed China, absorbed Japan, and show that the BVS, the absorb is really inferior to uh, drug eluting stand, especially within three years after implantation. And with that, uh, the sale uh, drops, uh, the device is recalled and terminated in 2017. So uh, how can we learn about this uh, uh, phenomena, uh, why the BRS failed? So the advantage, I would like to talk about advantage first. The rationale of BRS, of course, we have with uh, diminishing or with uh, uh, removing the needles for late complication because the stent uh, will disappear, will resolve and disappear, disappear. And we can maintain uh, physiological properties of the vessel, uh, vasomotor properties uh, especially, and we can remove remove the jail side branch and long jacket thing segment. This is important, uh, as uh, Dr. Bambang uh, said, uh, BR, uh, putting BRS is very useful. We can also eliminate artifact for future coronary CT. Uh, with this, uh, of course, patient can be followed up uh, by non-invasive CT coronary without needing uh, the uh, future uh, invasive uh, imaging or invasive uh, angiography. Some patients have preference of not having permanent implant. So uh, with BRS, this can be addressed. And current DS with biogradable polymers is not immune to long-term risk of vascular inflammation and stent thrombosis. That's, uh, I think, the rational or advantages of the BRS. The trick is how to balance the radial strength and resorption time. If the radial strength is uh, uh, very uh, low, then uh, the the support will not uh, sufficient. So will be there will be acute recoil. But uh, we have also need to uh, limit the resorption time because uh, if the resorption time is very long then there will be a local inflammation, there will be a risk of thrombosis. So the, the balance, uh, uh, I think, is the most important thing in uh, developing the uh, BRS. So we now have 
several uh, types of BRS. Um, uh, we can uh, generally uh, differ between two types, the polymer scaffold and metal scaffold. The polymer scaffold usually uh, consisting of polylactic acid with several uh, 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 device has been developed. Some of uh, the device with uh, different uh, strat thickness and resorption time. Uh, since uh, as uh, we Dr. Bambang uh, mentioned, is also a polylactic acid based uh, uh, scaffold. The other uh, scaffold is metal, uh, usually a magnesium alloy. We, this a uh, uh, mix between ma magnesium and aluminum usually. And, and now uh, we have also a, an iron alloy. Uh, most of the drugs uh, is embedded in the um, strap, usually serolimus. Uh, so I would like to talk about the BRS. BRS, the the properties of BRS is usually the strut are uh, thick and mostly thicker than the usual uh, drug eluting stent. And because of that, uh, you may uh, encounter uh, dif uh, difficult in crossing uh, some lesion, uh, especially high grade uh, or stenosis or calcified or maybe undilated lesions. And uh, because of this uh, invisible device, uh, trackability is also a problem. Uh, BRS are only available in limited size, the maybe 2.5, 3 millimeter and 3.5 millimeters. And some, uh, Companies have uh, 2.75 like uh, Sinsor, but most of them uh, around 2.5 until uh, 3.5 millimeters. And also in limited lengths. So we cannot have a long or very long uh, stand in BRS, mostly 12 to 28 millimeters. And uh, to implant, the it requires graded and gradual deployment uh, uh, going up to atmosphere, atmosphere every five seconds. So it's not uh, like DAS that where we can go up uh, uh, in a very short time. This is a gradual deployment. And the total deployment time uh, ranges from 40 to 60 seconds because after you have to uh, achieve your uh, nominal pressure or uh, the pressure that you want to uh, implant, you have to uh, stay uh, at the atmosphere the the atmosphere in around 20, 15 to 20 seconds. And limited expansion characteristic because uh, BRS is, uh, you can say soft and uh, we, you cannot uh, expand more than 0 0.5 millimeter beyond its nominal size. So uh, it's quite limited. It is an invisible device and its presence can be only detected by markers. Usually there are markers at the at each end of the device. A clinical application of VRS, we can learn from uh, several trials. Uh, I just put two trials here. The the absorb five uh, four, uh, the absorb four uh, we can learn that the uh, they use uh, PSP techniques, preparation, sizing, post dilate. Some of the uh, uh, studies also uh, talk about four P technique, uh, proper uh, patient selection, preparation, proper sizing, and post dilate. You have uh, you have to uh, pre dilate or uh, prepare the lesion very well, uh, and you have to post dilate uh, the after you implant the BRS. Then the post dilation should be around zero point five millimeters, not more. You have to also avoid a small vessel, 
or very large vessel. So uh, beyond uh, 3.75 is not recommended or below 2.5 millimeter is also is not recommended. In Biomed 2 trials, uh, the preparation should be uh, aimed at residual stenosis less than 20%. So you have to uh, prepare well the lesion uh, with balloon 1.1, 1, uh, 1, uh, 1 and 1 to, uh, to the vessel, and then uh, achieve the uh, lim uh, the Preparation with residual stenosis is uh, below 20%. In Biomed 2, also, uh, the, uh, the lesions, the uh, novel lesion, usually the simple one, uh, type A or maybe type B1 lesion. There are a lot of no here, uh, no left main, no hostel, no graft, no CTO, no thrombus and no major side branch more than 2.0 uh, millimeters. Uh, the vessel that I was uh, uh, said before that the diameter should be uh, around 2.5 to 3.75, not less and not, not more. And BNS, BRS tend to be uh, have a thicker wider scaffolds so in small vessel, if you put a 2.5 uh, millimeter scaffold and you cannot uh, uh, post delete more, uh, this uh, risk of uh, scaffold thrombosis is increased. And also in large diameter vessel, if you put a 3.5 millimeter vessel, uh, the risk of mass malopposition and under expansion is also increased. Other relations such as left main or the ostel, severely calcified, bifurcation, and ISR are shown inferior to DAS in clinical trials. So we will stick to a simple type A or B1 lesion for the DRS. How about the patient specific? STEMI patient uh, is not also recommended because. Uh, uh, but there, there should be no thrombus in in uh, when you put uh, the BRS, and in some trials uh, has shown to be inferior to DS. In non-ST elevation ACS, it's appear safe but need further data. So when, uh, how long the DAPT should be given to the patient when you put uh, BRS? It should be maintained until complete resorption of the scaffold. So if the resorption time is uh, 12 months, you can uh, you must uh, give uh, the APT for 12 months. If uh, two years, then it should be two years. Because uh, some uh, of the uh, trials show that scaffold disruption in this continuity during resorption may activate platelets. So um, until the resorption uh, is complete, then uh, you can uh, remove uh, one of the uh, antiplatelet. One issue that uh, uh, is very uh, important is uh, scaffold thrombosis. This one that uh, also make the absorb uh, BVS uh, failed. That because the strut thickness play important mechanism for scaffold thrombosis, and uh, usually. Uh, uh, while necessary for radial strength, the thick strut has less de deliverability, greater luminal protrusion, and turbulent flow. We have increased inflammation, delayed endothelialization, and longer resorption time. And some of the trials also uh, mention about uneven scaffold resorption. Some of the scaffold may already resolve, and in some part of the stand is not resorbed. So that's an even scaffold resorption may uh, have a role in scaffold thrombosis. I think uh, I will uh, continue with uh, case example. Uh, uh, we have uh, one patient, eight years old. 
uh, history of uh, hypertension, ex-smoker, dyslipidemia, and uh, the patient has already uh, implanted um, DES uh, previously in, in January 2024. And it, uh, the, the patient has planned to stage PCI in left circumflex. Uh, echo ejection fraction is 31% with uh, uh, clear uh, regular wall motion uh, abnormalities. This uh, uh, the uh, the, the uh, NGO for the patient. The target lesion is the uh, the one that uh, in um, mid or proximal circumflex. Uh, the patient has uh, been uh, put on temporary pacemaker because uh, in ECG uh, showed uh, uh, the patient is quite bradycardic. So, so we we uh, we are uh, feel safe that the patient uh, should be uh, on uh, temporary pacemaker. This is the LAD, and we can see uh, also the here uh, from RIO caudal, the lesion is uh, quite severe in uh, mid circumflex. We did uh, IFUS evaluation for the patient. Uh, we can see that the reference, the distal diameter of circumflex is around three millimeters, and there is a uh, Sandwich classification is not uh, 180 uh, uh, degree. Uh, it's not uh, that uh, thick. And the MLA is 2.21 at the uh, uh, stenosis. The reference of uh, uh, in proximal circumflex is 3.21. So we prepare the lesion with uh, non uh, compliant balloon with 2.5 uh, 10 millimeter at proximal circumflex up to 12 uh, atmosphere and we can see here that the balloon is not uh, fully expanded after that we did all uh, ifus evaluation again uh, the mla is quite uh, is increased to 2.78 at the uh, stenosis but there is no crack after the initial uh, non-compliant uh, balloon uh, um, uh, uh, treatment. So we did. Uh, we actually did uh, the uh, lesson further the lesson preparation with orbital arterectomy uh, with diamond back one point two five uh, millimeter uh, with speed of. 80,000 uh, to run retrograde one run. So because of that uh, uh, classification, I, uh, we, we think that we need uh, to further uh, polish the relation. After that, we all, uh, again, we did uh, IFOS evaluation and uh, this time there is a uh, some improvement in uh, diameter of the uh, stenosis uh, and MLA is now uh, 3.0. Again, after that, we uh, further uh, prepare the lesion with uh, non-compliance uh, balloon. This time we increase the size 2.75, 15 uh, millimeter approximately up to six, uh, 16 atmosphere. And after this, uh, we uh, continue with in, uh, BVS implantation. You can see there that the even though the, uh, the strut is thick and uh, I said before that the deliverability could be problem, but if you uh, prepare the lesion uh, well, then the deliverability, especially in circumflex, uh, the quite uh, bended circumflex, circumflex can be achieved uh, with uh, no problem. And we uh, place the sensor.
and we deploy at a six atmosphere. Um, after this, uh, we post dilate with uh, the same uh, non-compliance balloon, 2.75, 15 millimeter uh, at, at 16 atmosphere. But even though uh, there is quite a, a dent there, uh, we we will look at the IVUS uh, if we need uh, further uh, post dilation or not. The IVUS uh, actually uh, show that uh, the stand is well opposed and well expanded, and there is no stand edge dissection with MLA five point one six millimeter. So we are satisfied with the result. And this is the final uh, angiography. And we plan to um, uh, to follow up this patient, uh, maybe uh, uh, six months from the, uh, the implantation to look at the performance of this uh, uh, bioreservable stand. So my uh, take home message is careful technology is evolving, especially in physical characteristic. And uh, I think many of the company here uh, to that developing the uh, BRS uh, continue to uh, to develop uh, even uh, thinner uh, strut in order to have uh, more advantage advantages uh, for the BRS. And we should take note the properties of the current BRS. If you have BRS in your cat lab, you have to know uh, the uh, uh, stand uh, thickness, strut thickness, and then how to uh, implant, because we have to stick uh, at the procedures uh, the the good uh, practice procedures for the BRS is not the same as the DS that we are uh, usually uh, implanted. At present, the use of BRS is for simple denovulation, and if we uh, stick on the good uh, practice like uh, patient selection, proper sizing, predilation, post dilation, then I think. Uh, uh, the BIS may have uh, advantage to the patient, but uh, we, we still need uh, larger trials with adequate follow-up, especially uh, until uh, the resorption time is uh, uh, achieved, because uh, um, most of the uh, problems or uh, uh, complication usually after uh, the resorption time, uh, before the resorption, uh, resorption time uh, finish. So uh, like be, like absorb, uh, the three years uh, follow up uh, show uh, 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 inferior to DS, but we don't know uh, uh, after the resorption time is finished. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, terima kasih. Thank you, uh, Prof. Januar, for the, your yep. uh, comprehensive lecture and very great case demonstration. I think we uh, we can proceed to the second speaker, uh, Prof. Yuxiang. Hi. Uh, OK. So we can, can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very clearly right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, just yeah. just go ahead with your lecture, and then we will discuss later on. Okay, can you see the slide? Yep. Okay. Okay. Very clear. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Dai Xiang from Department of Cardiology, Zhongshan Hospital, Fudan University, and the Shanghai Institute of Cardiovascular Disease. It's my honor to be invited to share my opinion and the experience of the concept, recent evidence, and the optimization strategy of BRS implantation. For disclosure, I do not have any relevant uh, financial relationship to disclose. My presentation will include the five aspects uh, below. Uh, first of all, uh, let's take a look back of the concept of BRS. 
uh, by resourceful scaffolds, BIS represent the latest uh, revolution in interventional cardiology. As you know, in the first uh, as the first uh, revolution, balloon angioplasty was associated with high resistances rate due to inelastic recoil and the negative remodeling. And uh, as the second uh, revolution, bell metal stents increased the mechanical performance and with stand struck and uh, decreased inelastic recoil and negative remodeling, therefore decreased the rate of stenosis uh, compared to angioplasty. However, the rate of instant stenosis is still very high. And that's why DES was developed, which is uh, also considered to be the third revolution. And uh, DES has shown significant superiority to BMS in multiple studies. However, there are still many of the safety concerns of drug eluting stents, and that's why the bioresourceable scaffold technique was developed as the latest uh, revolution, also known as the arrow of intervention without implantation. And this slide showed the evolution of stent components. The first uh, major change, change to the classic bare metal stent was the introduction of the dur durable polymer to which a uh, eluting anti uh, neoplastic drug was fixed. Various drug eluting stents have replaced the durable polymer to one that is bioresourceable, which have the path for fully bioresourceable scaffolds as well. The potential unique benefits of BRS uh, were manifested at the cellular level, lesion level, and patient level. This technological endeavor promises to overcome long-term implications of non-compliant metal caving over a pulsatile vessel tissue, which is meaningful for vessel remodeling and vessel motion recovery. Another noticeable phenomenon is restoration of endothelial function with secondary reduction of atherosclerotic plaque. And this slide shows the detailed timeline of BRS resource, uh, resorption and its interactions with vessel wall. And you can see BRS is intended to provide drug delivery function and the mechanical support regarding acute gain and uh, prevention of acute vessel occlusion by providing transient scaffolding at early and middle stage. After dissolving, it allows to maintain the integrity of the vessel and return to its physiological, systolic, and diastolic properties, thereby facilitating a beneficial remodeling and consequently causing a reduced passage for persistent inflammation. And this is a real case, and we can see that a complete resorption of BRS over several years is accompanied by return of adaptive vascular remodeling for uh, three years and uh, four years. You can see that. The, negative, uh, the positive remodeling occurred at uh, four years. And let's see the recent evidence of BRS. And uh, according to absorber one year meta analysis, including absorber two, absorber three, absorber Japan, and absorber China, we can see that BRS did not 
lead to different rates of composite patient-oriented and device-oriented adverse events at one year follow-up compared to EES. However, the absorb three trial two-year results showed absorb BRS was associated with higher rates of target lesion failure driven by an increased in risk of target vessel myocardial infunction and the numer numerical higher device thrombosis. And that's why FDA warns of risk of major adverse cardiac events with absorbed BBS in 2017, and then absorbed BRS was withdrawn from the market owing to low sales. However, if you compare the result of absorbed China with other absorbed series studies, you can find that the result of, of sub China study was outstanding. That's very, very strange. Uh, however, we can come uh, deep into the detail of the uh, of sub China study, and we find the possible reason includes stricter selection criteria for patient and lesion, accurate scaffold size selection of, of sub BBS to match the vessel with the smallest difference of reverence vessel diameter by visual observation and QC measurement in absorb China compared to absorb Japan and absorb three. Finally, low percentage about six as uh, nine point six percent of absorb BBS used in extremely small vessel, revenant, uh, rev, uh, revenant vessel diameter less than 2.25 uh, millimeter in absorbed China. And that's why maybe the possible reason uh, can explain the outstanding result of absorbed China. Another very interesting result was driven by the landmark analysis in absorb three you can see that the period of excess risk for BRS ended at three years. Between the three year to five year follow up, substantial reduction in BRS relative hazards for target lesion failure and the scaffold thrombosis was observed coincident with complete BRS resorption. And it means that after complete BIS resorption, uh, the advantage of BIS came, uh, came, up, uh, came up. And furthermore, if we stratify absorb three by the vessel size, we also can find that the uh, inferiority of BIS was mainly from vessel less than 2.25 millimeter. And these data indicated that the improved strategy and improved patient or lesion selection strategy can be used to mitigate early BIS risk. As an improvement, PSP strategy was relatively widely used in absorb forge study, and it showed some advantage for mace in BIS. And you can see here, the device thrombosis proper or definite uh, uh, device thrombosis compared to uh, ES, the p-value is more than three, uh, 0 0.05. There's no significant, uh, significant uh, uh, di uh, difference between the two groups. And uh, then uh, what can we do for optimized uh, strategy during and after BIS uh, implantation? The difference uh, compared to DES implant is distinct. First of all, more aggressive lesion preparation is needed we recommend using cutting balloon or scoring balloon in both fibrosis and calcified lesions. 
And also, for even for calcified lesions, we should use some more aggressive preparations, such as um, uh, rotation or IVL and so on. And besides, one scaffold strategy to avoid overlapping BRS is recommended. And therefore, for lesion selection, a proximal remnant vessel diameter minus distal remnant vessel diameter should be less than uh, 0.5 millimeter. For, less, uh, for the lesion length, it should be less than 24 millimeter because as uh, uh, the, the, uh, the professor mentioned before, the longest uh, uh, length of the BRS is now 28 millimeter. So we suppose if the uh, lesion length is less than 24 millimeter, I think one, just one scaffold is enough. And, uh, and also we recommend to use bigger non-compliant uh, uh, balloon in post dilation for more aggressive post uh, uh, optimization and uh, then how can uh, get how to get better outcome when using BRS first of all the patient and the lesion selection should be strict and uh, I very agree with the professor before and uh, BRS is not de designed for all comers at least the, the current generation of BIS cannot be uh, suitable or appreciate for the um, most of the all, uh, all kinds of all types of lesion as we met. And uh, uh, younger patients, focal and uh, lipid or fibrosis lesion is recommended lesion diameter between 2.75 to 4 millimeter are preferred. And what's the most important is the intravascular imaging guided sh PCI should be widening or, or uh, in my center, almost all the cases using BIS, we use the intravascular image, especially OCT because of the higher resolution and uh, uh, OCT can provide more detailed information of the vascular and the plaque, uh, not just for pretreatment strategy or using uh, accurate scaffold size selection or the post dilation strategy. So BI specific OCT guided implantation st uh, strategy is I, I think is the very very important part of the implant uh, of the uh, procedure, and uh, and this guide showed a detailed lesion selection for BIS implantation. BIS should be avoided in the following situation, including lesion length more than twenty four millimeter, target vessel diameter less than two point five millimeter or more than three point seven five millimeter more than two target lesions or aorta osteo lesion, bifurcation lesions, uh, severe cultures and calcified lesions, thrombotic, thrombotic lesions and CTO should be avoided when we trying to use the BIS. And this slide showed a detailed PSP technique for optimized strategy in BRS implantation, mm -hmm. including uh, sufficient predilation size selection from 2.25 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter and effective post dilation, which means pressure more than 16 atm. And a balloon diameter should be bigger than scaffold diameter and less than scaffold diameter plus 0.5 millimeter. And the right figure shows the result of para, para, uh, repair risk registry according to the use of PSP technique. And we can see the lowest rate of mass was achieved by maximal PSP technique. The duration 
uh, debt is a larger possible reason for bad outcomes of the BRFs. According to previous data, stand thrombus occurred mostly in one month when stopping DAPT. Therefore, prolonged DAPT duration is recommended, and BRS was not recommended for intolerance of prolonged debt. And these are the main recommendations of DAPT after BRS, including recommend the duration of DAPT to be extended until complete resorption of the scaffold, which is thought to occur by three to four years after implantation. And it is perhaps uh, prudent to consider at least two to three years of debt with the current generation of BIS if the bleeding risk is low. And as I mentioned before, the study and the demand of BRS in clinic is still ongoing. Uh, even after 2017, the withdrawal of uh, absorb BRS uh, from the market. And let's see the design of, and the evidence of Synsorb BRS made in China. Synsorb BRS is a synonymous in looting PLLL by resourceful scaffold with PDLLA polymer and a strata thickness of 116 uh, micrometer. It uh, was approved by NMPA in 2020 and now with more than 30,000 implantation. The available size include 2.75, 30, and 3 five millimeter in diameter and uh, 12, 15, 18, 23, and 28 millimeter in length. So uh, just as the previous professor mentioned, uh, the selection of the uh, not only diameter or length is the, some limit in uh, current practice. This is the long term of SINSOB film study, and we can see no missed events after two years and complete absorption at a five year OCT follow up. You can see here uh, and from the OCT, very, very clear the uh, image, and it shows that the complete absorption uh, at a five year follow up. And this is the baseline character characteristics of things of uh, registry study. And you can see that almost uh, uh, nearly 1,000 cases were included in things of registry. And the lesion type almost, uh, almost uh, 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 more than 50%, uh, half, more than half of the patients belong to type A lesion that's uh, simple, uh, just a simple lesion. However, uh, less than 40% of the patients are um, some, some complex, some complex. So, and uh, we can see the five year long-term follow-up showed a lower rate of patient-oriented clinical endpoints and a target lesion failure uh, occurrence. The landmark analysis showed that the target lesion failure and the patient-oriented clinical events rate remained very low during three to five year follow-up, similar with the absorb studies. And this is a serial OCT follow-up of the first patients of SINSOP BI's implantation. And we can see complete scaffold resorption, but still quite good uh, lumen gain at five at 10 years follow-up. At 10 years follow-up, you can you can see. Sorry, I will I will show the And you can see this is the 10 years follow up result.
this is uh, in geography for a uh, uh, rotation around from different angles, and you can see very, very, uh, very, very good uh, new again. And you can see just here, and uh, the scaffold was complete absorption, and uh, uh, the new again is still very good, still very good, still very good here. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, also, for the latest, uh, latest uh, recent uh, since of OCT study was performed in our center and uh, other centers in China, uh, totally one hundred and seventy patients was were enrolled from March twenty twenty one to March twenty twenty four. It indicated that. OCT guided strategy will change 79% of the decision decision making in sensor BIS implantation. For preparation, 33 change in using a cutting bloom or scoring bloom. And uh, for sizing, 35% change in scaffold diameter and 42% change in length. For post dilation, 15% change because of under expansion and 8% change due to man position. And this result will be, will be presented at TCT 2024. At last, I would like to share some typical cases for successful and unsuccessful sense of BIS implantation. And this is a young lady of 38 years old presenting with a severe angina after exercise without obvious risk factors. And the coronary angiography, you can see that show a very, very uh, severe but focal stenosis at proximal and after ascending the uh, 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 anterior descending artery. And the first of all, we used a uh, two point five balloon for preparation, and the shape of the after uh, dilated balloon we can see is very well. And uh, after that, we performed the OCT, and you can see that. The OCT after uh, preparation showed that the most stenosis segment is a fibro and uh, fibro and a lipid, fibro and a lipid plex, proximal and the di uh, distal revenance vessel diameter is three o millimeter, and the lesion is well prepared with some small dissection, and then a. 3O BIS was implanted and the 3.25 balloon was post dilated. And this is the final result. And you can see from the OCT. And no dissection at the margin of the scaffold. And OCT showed good scaffold expansion and a position. And also no, no dissection at the proximal margin of the scaffold. You can see the, the, the whole the whole thing. And uh, uh, six months follow-up showed a good a position should also uh, put a position with an an a seniorization of structs. And you can see from here, from here, the structure is almost an a seniorization. Okay, and uh, let's see another another cases uh, another case of OCD guided uh, BIS implantation. This is a fifty year old male patient with non STEMI and no history of hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. 
And I see from the CIG, you can see almost the same as the last case is very, very severe. The is said proximal of left uh, 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 anterior descending artery. And OCT, you can see from here, after 3 0 uh, non compliant uh, balloon dilation, the, you can see here the Fibro uh, fibrosis and the lipid lesion without a very severe calcify calcification. And you can see here, just the lipid or fibrosis uh, lesion without a calcification. And uh, uh, we plan implant a 3.5 BIS uh, uh, scaffold. And uh, after that, a 4.0 balloon, NC balloon was post dilated. And we can see here, uh, the the whole of the ocean, uh, ocean the whole some not very very well however it's acceptable maybe there's uh, also we used a four o post dilation you can see there's still some structure not very uh, a position uh, a position very well. And the two year follow up, you can see here. That's good uh, position with and the signalization of the structs. And the the Newman gain is very is also very well. There's some you can see some structure. This is the uh, osteo osteo, and uh, maybe just uh, just. Uh, very, very few structs, not uh, in a signalization here. And also, I'd like to show an unsuccess uh, unsuccessful BIS implantation case. This is uh, also very young female patients, a 44 year old female with stable angina, also without a uh, history of hypertension and diabetes or dyslipidemia. And a CAG, you can see here. Also, very severe stenosis at the proximal of LAD, and uh, and sixty percent of uh, percent stenosis at the diagonal, the first diagonal, and OCT showed, and after a three O cutting balloon dilation preparation, and you can see here, you can see here, uh, also some uh, dissection, however. The lesion is not very well prepared. There's some calcified lesion behind uh, uh, here from nine o'clock to two o'clock, and uh, and however, uh, the 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 operator planted the uh, BIS three five three point five BIS and using a three point five NC balloon all. Also, uh, he dilated to 24 ATM, but BIS was not was still on the expansion. You can see here. That's good. That's good. However, when the middle of the scaffold, you can see, you can see it's not well expanded. And here, you can see here, here, the scaffold is not very well expanded. Even after a 3.5 balloon dilated to 24 ATM, the expansion rate was 65 percent. Therefore, we can see we can see that a, a good uh, lesion selection and preparation uh, are more important in BIS implantation compared to uh, DES. And uh, take home message, and things uh, uh, just as the uh, previous professor mentioned, uh, BIS is a lower thing. It is uh, suitable or uh, may be used in some uh, some uh, re uh, strict pa uh, synection synected patients or lesions. However, it is not. It cannot replace uh, DES in all comers, all the types of the patients, uh, the lesions. And since of BIS showed good long-term efficacy and safety in a large-scale multi-center registry study, 
and good lesion selection and optimized implantation strategy, and also the uh, uh, and, uh, more pronounced DAPT duration would improve the outcome. OCT would change decision making even in patients with relatively easy lesions. Just as you as you see in the last case, it uh, from the angiography we see we just uh, 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 treat it as a uh, very easy cases, uh, very uh, very uh, type A cases. However, and after OCT uh, imaging, you can see that uh, it is not a well prepared. And uh, after the implantation of BIS, it's, it cannot get a very good result. And uh, OCT uh, should be uh, guided, uh, pay, uh, a strategy should be suitable for BIS implantation. And uh, that's very important. And thank you, that's all, that's my uh, uh, sharing. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yuxian. It's very, very uh, systematic review as well as the very good case demonstration. Uh, before we go to the uh, panel discussion, I just want to confirm uh, one thing. Uh, in the last, in, in your last uh, take home assets, you mentioned about the importance of the, the use of the OCD if we want to implant the PRS. So are you saying that if we don't have OCT, don't implant BRS? Is that right? Is, is that your message? Yeah. OK, thank you. So uh, I think I, we can uh, I have a different go. answer, Dr. Bambang. Yep. I have this I different ahead. answer. OK. Uh, in Biomag trial, the uh, intravascular imaging is not mandatory. I think the 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 researcher there want to make the trials uh, as uh, as real as uh, in real life. You know, uh, intravascular imaging can be used if there is a dub in sizing and and if there is a dub in uh, position or something but it's not mandatory in uh, a biomag trial so uh, not uh, only uh, for uh, research but also they want to apply it to the uh, usual uh, cat lab environment i think uh, most of us uh, have uh, because not many of the cat lab have uh, intravascular imaging. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's not Prof. mandatory. Yeah. Even uh, the, the OCT or IVUS is used around thirty percent in the biomag trial. It's not that uh, that high. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Yandor. I think it's very important message. That's why I want to confirm. Uh, uh, to uh, Prof. Yuxiang, because it's very uh, rare, uh, the centers that, uh, you know, uh, the OCT is not available in all of centers, you know, it's very, very, uh, I think it's a very few hospitals have the uh, OCT. I think the message should be correct that uh, we should, you know, uh, do the uh, procedure properly. Imaging is strongly recommended. But as uh, Prof. Janwar said, that is not mandatory, but strongly recommended, meaning that we have to use uh, imaging to guide, uh, you know, to reach the, 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 the uh, you know, uh, the best outcome for the patients. I think we may go to uh, the panel's discussion. Uh, I think, ladies first, Dr. Ika, do you have any comments or questions? Please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bambang. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'm very excited and curious to learn about this fresh look of bioreservable scaffolds after it was withdrawn from the market in 2017. And I believe that this technology is still the way to the future 
I think to answer the issues of long-term vessel caging, normal vessel motricity, and long-term positive remodeling in DES implantation. However, it seems like this uh, BRS is somehow exclusive for certain cases only. Uh, well, it is less ideal mm. for uh, complicated lesions like osteal calcification, bifurcation, so on and so forth. So uh, I would like to address my question to Professor Januar. Um, according to your experience, uh, what kind of lesion or uh, patient situations that benefit the most of BVS usage? And how about the use of BRS in ISR patient? Because I read a, a multi-center study about it that stated that the use of BRS in ISR is uh, quite effective and safe. And my second question to Dr. Yu Xiang, uh, do you think that will improve the technology so BRS could be used universally in all cases in the future? Thank you. Uh, please, I think Prof. Januar first. Uh, answer first. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, the first question, uh, what kind of, of uh, patient or patient uh, should be used uh, the BRS? I think the, the, the younger patient with long uh, 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 life expectancy and the relation should be type B1 relation single uh single uh, lesion not uh not too long and not too uh, uh calcified if you have uh not to, also the size the size of the uh, vessel size uh is also uh, limited because you cannot put uh, brs in a very small or very uh, large uh, vessel like osteo or left main, you cannot uh, because left main maybe for or for something, and we can we don't have any uh, BRS with the uh, the size, and um, that's uh, I think uh, uh, some uh, limitation in in this uh, in this uh, BRS technology. Uh, the second question, uh, what is the what is it? The <laughs> BRS in ISR, Professor oh, General. In ISR. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, have uh, never read the uh, your uh, mentioned uh, trials, but uh, based on the absorb uh, trial, uh, the uh, ISR uh, the BRS is uh, is not. Uh, uh, is inferior to the DS in uh, ISR or maybe to the DCB. So I don't think uh, until the uh, last trial uh, with this, uh, I don't think I will uh, recommend uh, BRS in, in uh, ISR. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Januar. I think that's a that's, that's good point because if we treat ISR, the kit is already there, you know. The vessel is already kitted. So yeah. why 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 should we use BRS? Just just yeah. use uh, DCP in, instead of uh, BRS, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh Prof. Yushan, can you answer the, 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 the other question, please? Yeah. Uh hi, uh Dr. Ika Kama. And thank you for your question. And uh, in my opinion, the the future of BIS in more types of lesion and more kinds of patients, uh, I think it it um, was uh, uh, should be the material of the BIS is the most important thing. And you know the uh, current generation of BIS, the, the material is the PLLA. I think this material is uh, limited its uh, use in many, many complicated uh, cases. 
and uh, uh, just as I mentioned before, because the sick uh, structure, uh, sick sickness of the structure is a very, very uh, more than 150 micrometer, and also the flexibility and uh, of the of the scaffold is not very good uh, that good as uh, DES. So, uh, and however, some new material of BIS is now being developed in, I think also in China and also in other countries. Uh, uh, as as I know, a uh, new kind of BIS made of iron in. Uh, in China is now uh, 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 completed uh, its phase two, phase two uh, clinical study, and uh, the result will released uh, in TCT 2024. And uh, in this uh, phase two clinical study, uh, the iron BRS is widely used uh, in type, type B and also in type C lesions. Just uh, uh, the limitation or the uh, in, in inclusion criteria is almost the same as DES. Um, I, I think the future of BIS is is uh, is very very forwarding, and uh, uh, because of the development of new material, um, will be used in BIS. I uh, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So we can move to the second panel. Uh, Dr. Dendi, do you have any question or comment? Thank you, Dr. Waman. Uh, thank you for uh, this great lecture and great discussion about this interesting topic. So I would like to ask a question for, uh, to Prof. Day. So as we already know, the, the biology of restenosis mechanism including inflammation. So how about the inflammation itself response after BRS implantation? So before it is completely absorbed. So I think the, the absorption, the resorption of the BRS scaffold uh, is an active process, I think, uh, involving, the, involving the inflammation. So uh, how about inflammation response to the BRS? Compared to more thicker or less thicker scaffold, maybe uh, PLLA or another base, tyrosine acid or uh, metal magnesium, is there any different about uh, in terms of uh, inflammation uh, response? And the second uh, question, I want to hear your thought about the the the, the statement of uh, the DCB is the new BRS, BRS because we 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 now we a lot of use a lot uh, a lot of use of DCB like you 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 state that not all commas uh, can put we can put the the BRS so how about the uh, and I want to hear to hear your thought about the DCB is the new BRS okay that's uh, my question thank you Please, uh, Prof. Yusha, it's very interesting uh, questions from Dr. Dendi. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Dendi. Uh, I, I appreciate your very, very meaningful questions. And inflammation is a very, very um, uh, important uh, reason for restenosis, as we know. And uh, uh, just as uh, uh, Jenya uh, mentioned before, at the more the more sickness, the uh, the more uh, inflammation. So uh, now, current generation of BIS is uh, one hundred and sixty mi micro millimeter is very very sick, very very sick. So, uh, uh, also, we admit that the inflammation is, um, I think, is uh, more severe than some uh, thin thinner structure uh, or DES. Um, that that's uh, uh, unavoidable. So uh, in our center, we tried uh, we tried to use some anti-inflammation drugs when using after implantation of BIS before its complete resorption. 
and uh, that's one thing and the, the second thing is that that's why we did not recommend the use of uh, BIS in some small diameter uh, vessel as you see uh, the, the resistance is, is not is not avoidable in 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 the in the vessel so if we place a, a BIS in a, such a thick structure BIS in very small diameter vessel as you see uh, it's a uh, uh, 160 micrometer uh, plus two for the uh, sequence sequences uh, just uh, uh, 320 micrometer if we use the bis in 2.5 mit millimeter uh, vessel just uh, after the implantation the uh, uh, minimal lumen uh, diameter diameter may be just uh, 2.2 <laughs> 2.2 after implantation, even in the ideal situation. <laughs> so after that, uh, some inflammation uh, occurred, uh, uh, promoted the restonosis. I think that we cannot get a very good result after 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 the uh, that situation. And uh, that's my uh, first uh, first uh, uh, answer to your uh, uh, my answer to your first question the second thing you mentioned uh, deb and uh, bis that's uh, that's the two um, method for uh, leaving nothing be, uh, behind uh, uh, just uh, uh, yeah uh, so i there's, there's two strategy however i think these two strategies uh, differs a lot. Uh, in in my opinion, if we want to uh, using this uh, leaving nothing behind the strategy in large in large uh, vessel, I prefer BIS. However, in small diameter vessel, I prefer uh, the DEB and. Uh, even uh, that, that's the uh, uh, selection criteria for for the uh, diameter of the vessel. Second, for the uh, patient selection, uh, I did I prefer uh, BIS used in young patients in young patients, and uh, however, in very very uh, old patients, I maybe I will use uh, DEB. And that's my uh, choice. Thank you, Prof. Uh, in my opinion, I think the main difference uh, between DCP and uh, BRS is the temporary gauging. DCP doesn't have the temporary gauging. So BRS uh, will, will give any advantage in terms of, you know, Avoiding the vessel recoil, some that the DCP cannot do that. I think I think that's yeah. the, the the main difference. Uh, Prof. Seifer, please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bambang, Prof. Uh, Su Siang, and Prof. Januar and other uh, participants, panelists. Uh, it was also interesting for me because you know, uh, in our daily practice, it is difficult to finding out. Uh, to find out very simple <laughs> relation, uh, especially for me, uh, I work in a surgery hospital, which is uh, many patients come with a very late and complex uh, disease. But anyway, it is also, I'm agree with uh, Professor Su Siang that uh, this uh, uh, technology is actually uh, trying uh, to, to achieve uh, nothing behind later but the 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 most burden most burden occur during the implantation and during the uh uh existence of the scaffolding and uh the challenge i think uh that how can the technology address those uh, uh difficulties uh otherwise uh, it was uh some uh, some person uh prefer DCB uh, rather than the uh, BRS. Yeah, of course, uh, Professor Siang 
uh, already you Chang uh, mentioned already that uh, for uh, elderly, for small face, uh, we prefer DCB. But uh, for the larger face cell, we use uh, BRS. What actually uh, the uh, BRS uh, 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 advantage in uh, in terms of the uh, large face cell, uh, whether uh, the skull fold important during uh, some period uh, before uh, disappear? This is my question. My first question, and the second question is. Uh, regarding the long-term uh, DAP uh, uh, usage, uh, how uh, the data show uh, the uh, evidence of the bleeding in uh, this uh, BRS uses. Uh, for and for Doctor uh, Professor Januar, uh, actually interesting also to see uh, in uh, in your case uh, uh, the lesion actually uh, no. Uh, not completely in uh uh uh, uh extended instead of uh there was some waste there uh are you sure that uh, this patient has also uh, uh, in, uh, uh important or benefit for the long term and then whether uh the the imaging before implantation also necessary i mean uh, supposed to be three times uh, before the implantation, uh, even uh, for to see the characters of the, the lesion, and the secondary is uh, after after uh, predilitation, before the implantation, and after the implantation. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Saifur. Very long, long questions. Please, Prof. Yusian, short answer if, if, if possible. Thank you. Because we, uh -huh. yeah, we have very limited time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stafford. And uh, mm, uh, I, I will answer your uh, second question first, uh, because um, DAPT, uh, uh, in, in our center, we also, uh, in the early phase, we did not um, uh, see the important importance of uh, pronounced DAPT in BIS. We just uh, followed the uh, guidelines of um, DAPT just uh, in, uh, used in uh, DES. We stopped the DAPT after after one year, after one year. However, uh, and at that, at that time, just uh, about uh, 2015 uh, or 2016, we find uh, several, ca several cases of standard thrombosis uh, just uh, just uh, at uh, one point five uh, year, so uh, and then we 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 performed OCT and find the scaffold discontinued, and some some scaffold just uh, uh, protrude to the lumen, and 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 we and then we we we, we at last we find that maybe that's the that's the reason and then we continue to uh, use or enhance our DAPT strategy we uh, uh, used some more uh, aggressive uh, DAPT uh, strategy in these patients before we find its uh, complete absorption so in our center the DAPT strategy uh, of the BIS depend on the Result of OCT. We we uh, in in almost uh, uh, BIS patient, uh, 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 patients uh, after the implantation, we will recheck OCT every year. Every year, uh, and uh, you 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 may, maybe you can see it's uh, it's very expensive and it's uh, mm, maybe on need. However, uh, because now uh, in China the medical insurance are covering very very good mm, uh, these intravascular image. Uh, now the OCT price in China is about. Uh, one thousand U.S. dollars. One thousand U.S. dollars. So, and uh, the the medical insurance that will cover, will cover, will cover. So every year, these patients we will uh, perform the OCT to see if the uh, uh, scaffold is 
uh, absorbed a lot. If the strat, uh, strata is completely absorbed, so we will just uh, stop uh, DAPT to single antiplatelet therapy. And that's what we do in our center. Maybe it cannot be spread. The, the the experience cannot be used widely in the in the world. However, it's our just uh, to see why uh, we should uh, enhance or just uh, we cannot uh, uh, stop DAPT. That's why. And for your first question, actually, in uh, I I I I'm, I did not quite follow, and uh, and I I think you uh, maybe uh, in, in some uh, in I have met some cases that uh, when we use the DEB uh, in very large vessel. However, we did not get a very quite. Uh, these are very young patients. We did not uh, get very good results after DEB. Uh, I can uh, we can see some big dissection or the timid flow is not very good, and uh, we tried to use a, a BRS after DEB. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, when we use the DEB, we need to also we need to prepare the lesion very well. Also, we use the cutting balloon, spawning balloon, or something like that to make. The uh, lumen gain very well. However, after after this aggressive preparation, maybe there's a very big uh, uh, dissection to influence the timid flow. After that, I think that uh, at that situation we, we can combine the uh, use of uh, BRS uh, instead of just uh, uh, DCB to leave the uh, to leave the. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's also uh, uh, leaving nothing behind as <laughs> a strategy, binding together, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I think before we close the, the session, I just want to take my opportunity to, to ask you one question. Because, uh, you know, when we want to deliver PRS, we have to make sure that only one chance we go to the target vessel and then deploy, that's all. We don't have second chance, right? So do you yeah. recommend to use guide extension to make everything much more simpler and easier and guarantee we can go to the target uh, lesion easily? No? Uh, actually. Actually, no, and uh, because as you know, uh, the profile of BIS is very big, is very big. So it cannot enter five French uh, extension catheter. We tried, we tried, and a very, very uh, it, uh, not good thing for BIS because you cannot see the BIS. It just has two markers there. If the uh, scaffold just uh, uh, separated with the balloon. It's a very disaster. We cannot find it. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. That's that's good point. I think uh, before we close, I just want to uh, take the opportunity to give us uh, some you know key uh, key messages. Uh, Parindra, can you help me to share? Okay. Uh, so uh, we have uh, some key learning points from this session. This uh, next slide, please. Uh, regarding the lesion selection, as Prof. Yushan uh, uh, mentioned earlier on, that big VS is inappropriate in big vessel caliber, small vessel caliber, big discrepancy of uh, proximal and distal reference diameter, as well as the unfavorable for the auto oscillation and calcified lesion. Lesion preparation is key of success. So uh, to, to, to optimize the device implantation that uh, may improve the clinical outcomes in patient receiving uh, BVS. And lastly, intracoronary imaging is not mandatory, but very strongly recommended. I think, uh, thank you for uh, all of the participants. I think this is 
uh, this in this uh, webinar, the highest attendees more than 400. So congratulations for the IC client. And thank you for Prof. Yushiang, Prof. Januar, Dr. Dendi, Dr. Ika, and Prof. Saifur. Thank you as well for the all of the secretariat uh, who helped the, the, the webinar running well. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.